Hey guys, Chris from Ultimate Recycler. We're back with another unboxing video. We have a box of vintage china. Uh, I don't know how old it is. I don't actually know what's under this old yellowed newspaper. Uh, I can see a few things on the top. I thought I'd do an unboxing video for you. This is part nine of our Radio Shed house lot cleanup that we've been doing a whole playlist on. Um, we've finished the cleanup. The last episode was on a shell collection. I'm going to do a few episodes on various unboxings, uh, pricing. I'm not sure if there's any more tools. I keep glancing over here because there's a massive pile of boxes there which I've got to go through. Now, a lot of them are books and they won't be that exciting. We will do a top 10 at the end of this playlist and it might be quite a way down the list simply because there's so much to go through. And there could be some really good books amongst it. It's going to take me a while to research all the books. But in the meantime, we'll do a few unboxing videos for you. Uh, this is a box of china that I don't know what's in it, so let's have a look together. Now, in a few of these unboxing videos, I said, let's have a guess at how much value is in here. And I've been horribly wrong. In fact, I think most of you did better than I did. Um, perhaps I'm subconsciously undervaluing it because then it's kind of more exciting when it works out much better. But I'm going to, look, I would say $50 in here, but... Since I've been so far wrong, let's say, well, let's double it. Let's say 100 and see how we go. I can't see anything good on top. The first thing I want to do is see the date on the newspaper. 1983, so it's been in storage for quite some time. So that little gold vase has got a bit of wear on it. It's possibly Japanese. Not really any value there. I'll spread all these things out, but I'll go through them with you. Now, this one I actually picked out in the video in the shed. Um... I'm not sure of the markings there, and I don't know if you can see that. Let's try and get a zoom in. It looks maybe European, but then there doesn't seem to be a lot of dirt or wear to the base, so maybe it's not as old as I think it is. Uh, it's known as bisque pottery with that sort of matte finish. It's quite light. Um, it looks home painted. In fact, it looks very amateurishly painted, so maybe, maybe this was actually all white and someone actually did this. Look, I don't think there's a lot of value there. There's no damage to it. I'd probably put that in the shop for 10 bucks. Someone will buy it. Look, if it's worth a lot more, well, they'll get a bargain, won't they? All right, right, let's. right, I'll just put the paper on the floor for now so that we can go through. Now, that looks like a soap dish. Looks to have a bit of age to it. No marks. It could be English. It could be Japanese. Um, probably, yeah, probably maybe just $5. I don't like being too high with my prices on this sort of stuff because I do like it to sell quickly through the shop. Uh, now this is a classic Wade Irish porcelain. I recognise the glaze and the colours. It used to bring really good money. I remember selling a piece on eBay for about $100 once. Um, I think that's probably only a $10 item now. Prices have dropped a lot on glassware in China. Now we've got a teapot here. Underneath all this paper doesn't look to be damaged. I hope there's a lid for it. Yeah, that's interesting. It's quite an old one. It's got raised enamel painting, which is typical of Victorian era, but I don't think this is Victorian. Even though this, the patterns kind of look that, it's more. there's no glaze worn off the base. I always look for wear around the rim where it touches the table. A teapot would be used a lot, so if it was a really old antique teapot, there would be guaranteed a lot of wear. Uh, the three dots are where it stood on a little stand in the kiln. I'm not sure what these marks are. I think it's possibly English. Oh, actually, I can see in the reflection here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It does say made in England there. I'm pretty sure it says England. Um, I don't think it's a Victorian, though, but I think it's a nice older teapot. It may be 20s, maybe 1930s. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hopefully we can find a lid for it, because I think that will hold a bit of value. All right. There doesn't appear to be a lot in this, so this will be a fairly short video. Let's get into this one. Oh, we have another one of these things. In fact, it looks identical to the other one. Absolutely identical. And that makes me think that they were probably a mass-produced thing, and I don't think they're as old as what I thought. As I said, they're really clean around the base. Um, they could be quite modern, actually, and someone's just hand-painted them. So maybe this was something that the uh, lady got into in later years. A lot of ladies painted porcelain. 
It's not normally the sort of stuff you see that's painted though. Yeah, but I don't think there's a lot of value there. What did we put on the first one? I don't remember. Whatever I put on the first one, double it. Okay, next one we have another... Oh, this is brass. I thought it was just another gilt vase, but this one's actually brass. It's not overly old. There's no marks on it at all. It's possibly copper art or something from the 1990s. Not much value there at all. We have a very Italian looking jug here, but it may even be made in China. Oh, it's Japanese. There you go. Uh, that would have been my third guess. Uh, very often on these, the petals get broken. This one actually looks all right. Amazing. Uh, it's probably 1960s. Just says Japan. Hello. We've had some wildlife crawl out. A little cockroach just fell out. Um, only it's it's a luster finish. It's pretty and look, people, the old ladies like collecting this sort of stuff. It it does look pretty on the shelf. You could put a couple of flowers in it. I think we'd get ten for it. So I'll tally up this when I get to the end, and I might maybe I may be too far high with my hundred. I might have been better sticking to fifty. Oh no, this will help. We have the lid to the teapot. And that's undamaged. Now with teapots, there's nearly always a chip or a chunk missing off the lid. The other place to look straight away if you're looking at buying teapots or if you collect teapots, the spouts nearly always have a chip off the, the end of them. So that one's actually in really good nick. We'll wash that one up. I thinking I'm thinking we'd get 50 for that, an English teapot. So that's well worth washing up. Uh, not much else left because there's a rather big bowl in here. We'll see what's on this side. Um, it's glass, this one. Well, it's just a vase. Uh, quite chunky. It's vintage. Not quite. Uh, maybe Depression era. There's a lot of muck in it. Um, maybe 1930s or 40s. Uh, could even be 20s, actually. The common patterns, and they have that star pattern on the base, so it could be 20s. It's not damaged. We might get 10 for that. It's actually a heavy duty one, which is great for, uh, you know, a lot of vases that are quite light. You put a, a decent sized flower in them and they fall over. This one at least will be stable. So we'll put 10 for that one. And all we have left is this bowl. So there wasn't a great deal in this box. Actually, this isn't a bowl. It's a ha got a handle on it. So who knows what that is? I think most of you would know. Not that many people use them these days. It's a chamber pot, or a gazunda, they call them. Which, uh, if you haven't heard that phrase before, it stems from the pot, which, if you didn't twig by now, is basically a toilet, goes under the bed. Hence, it's called a gazunda. Uh, they also had little um, pot cupboards that went beside your bed, which now people buy as bedside tables. And that's where you put the chamber pot to save you getting up and going to the loo during the night. Um, these days it's quite easy because we all have nice heated houses and indoor toilets but back in these times and in Victorian times quite often you had to put on a coat and your wellies and trudge out into the cold wintry night and down a little path to the toilet in the backyard which was nothing more than a hole in the ground so um, we are pretty spoilt these days but that's in good nick the handle's not broken really nice colours on it uh, and I think it was Grimwade's an English stamp there it's probably early 1900s to 1920. So that's a good piece. And with that colour, I reckon we'd probably get $40, $45 for that in the shop. It's not damaged. So um, I've funny, I had someone pick up one the other day in the shop and said, oh, look, a casserole pot. So, oh, I'm not sure you'd want to cook a casserole in, in a gazunda. But anyway, that's pretty good. We'll add up what we got. And um, with that one and the teapot, I reckon my 100 isn't far off. Okay, guys, how did your guessing game go? I was light on again, but at least I was a bit closer. 155 based on the prices I mentioned. I did not include... Oh, I just left this little gold one out because I think it's probably only a $1 item. So not a, no big surprises, but not a bad little haul. I'm glad we found the lid to the teapot because that made a huge difference. Um, so pretty well just as I went through... I wrote chamber pot instead of gazunda because I didn't know how you spell gazunda. I guess you could make it up. I don't think it's actually in the dictionary. So there you go. Thanks for that. Um, hope you enjoyed it. 
I enjoy going through boxes. They're great fun. I don't think we had any other china that I know of. Most of the boxes over that far side of the room there are going to be books and a bit of radio gear and stuff. So I'll be going through three uh, radio type items in my workshop at home very shortly. And that will be the next episode on this series. So thanks for watching this. I uh, appreciate your support. We'll catch you in the next video.